Hi, welcome to the first video for the Healdsburg Hacker Club. Uh, I'm going to start from the beginning and kind of give some basics of electricity since uh, I'm going to assume you guys don't have uh, and you may have not gotten to the electricity classes yet or you know any of those lessons and just start from zero uh, to keep it safe. So, so I thought what better slide to start with than a weather map <laughs> and that's because I want to point something out that I kind of noticed when I was in uh, engineering classes and physics classes in high school and college and that is that I see a lot of parallels between electricity and uh, water and air and even uh, temperature and we'll talk about that real quick here. Um, so this is a map of the United States where it's actually pointing out where there are places of low temperature and places of high temperature and I want you to think about for a minute what do you think if you're standing right here in the middle between these two a low and a high zone if you if you're feeling wind what direction do you think the winds going well if you thought that the wind is going towards the low area you're right the uh, high pressure here is pushing the air away and the low pressure is kinda sucking it in so uh, you kind of a tool a two-way draw here a push and pull and so air is very, uh, you know, that's a pretty common thing. That's how wind is made. Now there's other forces of, uh, at work as well as the Coriolis effect of the world and all that. But uh, just to keep it simple, high and low pressures. And the next slide goes a little bit further. There, you know, a balloon with high pressure in, or higher pressure inside of it than what's outside. If you uh, open up a little piece of the balloon there, the air is going to escape out because the air wants to escape the high pressure and go to the lower pressure, just like in the map with wind. So I noticed this is also the same thing with uh, heat. If you have a kind of a, you start off with a, a piece of metal and you put it over a candle, well this becomes a high temperature and this, be, this is still somewhat lower. So that means your heat is going to travel from high to low. So let's go back to the idea of pressure for a minute. <clears throat> let's say you have two rooms here and that I've drawn and you've connected them with a little little tunnel or something and you have 10 units of pressure of air in one room and zero on the other. So what's going to happen? Well obviously you're going to actually have flow from one room to the other in this direction. Air is trying to escape the high pressure and go into the low pressure as we all probably uh, figured out ahead of time here. And even further, what's going to happen at equilibrium when it's done? Obviously uh, we're going to stop when they're equal because then there's no difference between the two. So it kind of makes sense. If you start with 10 and 0, you probably come up with 5 and 5. And the units here aren't important. It's more the, the comparison, how they uh, compare to each other. So what about if you have 0 and 0? <clears throat> what would happen then? Well, same thing as the 5 and 5, right? Because there's no pressure here, no pressure difference. There's no reason for air to move. And even if there's higher pressure in both uh, rooms, in this case 10 or 10, or 100 and 100, or a million and a million, it doesn't matter because they're the same. So the thing I'm tr trying to point out here is that it's all about the difference in pressure between, in, in this case, the two areas, the two rooms, that makes a difference. It's not so much how much pressure is in each room, but how different they are. So kind of keep that in the back of your head as we move forward here, and we'll uh, probably be bringing this up again. So when we talk about electricity, uh, we're not talking about high pressures or anything, or we're not talking about temperatures. We're talking about a new thing that's called voltage. <clears throat> voltage is pressure on electrons. That's what, we, that's what moves electrons from one area to another. So here's a couple batteries you guys have probably all seen before. So these AA batteries are 1.5 volts. So are the AAAs, by the way, the smaller, and, and the, the, uh, the bigger batteries are usually all 1.5 volts as well. Although this nine, this battery is 9 volts, and I thought I'd show you a quick little trick as to how they get 9 volts into this battery. Here's a slide that shows a battery, where, uh, 9 volt, where they've ripped it open. And you can see inside, there's actually, you can see 3 here, but there's actually one more row underneath. There's actually 6 small batteries. They're actually smaller than AAAs in there. And if you stack them end to end, they actually add. So 1.5 volts on each battery, but there's 6 of them, so you go 6 times 1.5. That's how you get your 9 volts. Uh, I thought I'd throw that in there. But anyway, uh, what? so actually I'm going to go back real quick. So wh how big is a volt? Um, you know, we have one and a half volts here. Obviously you've probably held a battery like this between your fingers and didn't really feel anything. And even uh, with a nine volt, you've been able to touch these. Obviously they're safe because we're walking around touching these nine volt batteries and no one seems to really worry about it. You can even lick them <laughs> if you've probably tried that before. You get a little bit of a shock, but it's not going to really kill you or anything So or hurt you. So nine volts uh, is not going to really hurt you. 
but the uh, here's a battery that's in your car and a battery in a car is 12 volts which kind of is funny because every time I see someone trying to jump a car I can I see them they're always nervous about touching these battery terminals like they're gonna get shocked when really it's not much more powerful than a 9 volt battery so just with a 9 just as with a 9 volt battery you can touch you know the positive and negative together and not really feel much with your finger same thing would happen happen here so you're really no danger of electrocuting yourself with a car battery um, now it is you do want to make sure you you put the red to the red and the black clip to the black on and same thing on the other end because if you reverse that bad things can happen but as far as electrocution uh, that's not going to happen with a car um, now uh, we talked about voltage let's move on to the next thing we uh, measure when we talk about electricity and here is a wire <coughs> that I've drawn two sides of here or the edges of and here are some electrons flowing through the wire and they're going to the right we need to measure the idea of like how much electricity is really occurring here, how much is flowing past. Uh, so what you could do is you can kind of pretend you could pick like an arbitrary point, let's say right there, and you can, you know, you can, I guess you can say you can count the number of electrons per second that are passing by. But with electricity, electrons are so small and there are so many of them that that number would just be huge. So just to give you an idea, uh, the for one second, uh, if you have one amp of current, and we'll talk about what an amp is, this, that's this many electrons passing by per second, one amp. And the, the sign for amp is uh, actually the letter I. And unfortunately, this kind of looks like an L, but this is an uppercase I. And that's the units. So Ampere is uh, a scientist way back in, I guess, France. And amp, you often hear shortened to. And I don't know why we didn't use a uppercase A for the symbol for current. Instead, we used I, but uh, so be it. But that's a lot of electrons per second. And an amp, do I talk about that in the next slide? Yeah, I do, actually. So how big is an amp? A volt, we, we realize one volt's really not a big deal. Is one amp a big deal? Well, here's a blown up picture of a couple of LEDs. Um, you've probably seen these before. They're in a lot of like, you know, uh, remote control. When you press a button, you'll see it light up or um, they're just everywhere. Uh, so how much current does it take to light up one of these guys? And to do that, to look into that, I actually downloaded this, the uh, spec sheet for an LED that I use often. It's actually a uh, two-color LED, red and green. That's why there are three legs here. But uh, still the same idea. And if you look down in the spec chart for this, you can actually find that it says the steady current that we're allowing here is 30 for the red, R, and 25 milliamps. <clears throat> so an amp is so big that it would just blow this thing out of the water if you plugged it in. Um, you have to do much less. So we actually have to talk about milliamps, which are one thousandths of an amp. So this thing can take 30 thousandths of an amp or 25, depending on which color it is that you're driving. So let's bring that, I think, I, yeah. I so 30 milliamps is the same thing as 0 0.03 amps. So that gives you an idea that, you know, one amp would be a lot, uh, is, is a lot of current. And it is. <clears throat> most of the things that we do in circuits, an amp is pretty uncommon. You're going to, most LEDs and switches and stuff are probably going to be on, around this order. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the last thing. We've talked about current in amp, uh, measured in amps, and we've talked about uh, voltage or pressure measured in volts. The last thing that we're going to be talking about a lot with electricity is this idea where Again, we have, uh, in this case, it's not a wire. This is just a street, if you will, with cars going in that direction. If I was to draw that same street, but kind of pinch it a little bit there, that would slow the cars down. And not as many cars per second, which, which is analogous to current in our previous example, you know, the amps, electrons per second. Uh, that slows it down. So fewer uh, cars per second can go through because of this pinch. So what I've done is I've added resistance to the street. And so resistance is a way to slow traffic down. And you can slow a uh, pipe, or excuse me, you can slow water in a pipe down by adding a pinch point or a valve that actually kind of creates a pinch point like that for you. So water, air, um, you know, all these things are kind of the similar idea. Resistance slows down current or brings the number of uh, cars per second, or in the case of electricity, electrons per second current uh, down. So that's what resistance does. So here's a few uh, resistors blown up so you can see them. They have these different colors which are used to identify how much resistance each resistor has. 
And by the way, in case you're curious, <clears throat> resistors are made by starting off with a kind of imagine a cauldron or something of of uh, some uh, ceramic material. It's kind of like a mix. It's kind of just like looks like glue almost, and it, it that doesn't really conduct electricity very well. It's more of an insulator. If you think about it, if you add some glitter of like some aluminum powder or something, aluminum is conductive. Aluminum is a metal, and if you just add a little bit of aluminum and let it mix in that cauldron, then you've actually just increased the ability of that material to conduct. And if you add more aluminum powder to that cauldron, it'll conduct more. And that's kind of how this works. They start off with some material, they add some uh, uh, conductive material or flakes or something to it. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but by adding more and more stuff together in the mix, and then finally when they when they have the mix to where they want it, they can squeeze out these little pieces of, uh, you know, kind of solidify it in this shape, paint the stripes on, and there's your resistor. So. <clears throat> Oh, I skipped. Uh, so ohms is resistance in equations. You see it as R, but when you actually see resistors and their values, um, you see them. The actual unit looks like omega, or the O for ohms. All right. So how do they relate? The resistance, the current, and the voltage. Well, if the resistance goes up, which means I'm pinching the street more and more. That means the current goes down. That kind of makes sense, right? You can kind of think of a straw with water going through it. As you pinch it more and more, which means your resistance is going up, less and less water is going to go through. So that makes sense. Also, if you increase the pressure, uh, voltage, if you will, the current would also go up. So that also makes sense. So there's resi resistance and voltage and current kind of relating to, uh, to each other. And that yields us, or leads us, to Ohm's law. V, v, which is voltage, is equal to current, I, there's our letter I in there, times resistance. So Ohm's law. And I, I just want to point something out here is, I'm just, it's so nice that it's such a simple equation for how they relate. You know, nature could have thrown something like this at us, like voltage is equal to this plus R squared, you know. Thankfully, it's not. It's very simple. Voltage equals current times resistance. And thank goodness, because this is the most important equation in electronics. So thankfully, it's also a very simple equation, because we're going to be using it quite a bit. So let's do an example. I'm going to take our 9-volt battery. Uh, in case you were wondering, this side is the volt, uh, positive side, and this is the negative side. So if I put a wire up, I'm carrying the 9 volts around, and goes all the way to our resistor. And this resistor is a 1,000 ohms, and that's uh, the color code actually is correct for 1,000 ohms. And we'll we'll talk about that at some point. And then the zero volts is carried all the way around to the other side. So this would be a, probably the simplest circuit you can have. By the way, notice it's a circle. You don't just start and go through the resistor and then stop. It, uh, electricity has to run in a circle. There has to be a complete circuit. They call it. Uh, okay. So let's figure this out. How much current, how many electrons per second, or how many amps really? Because electrons per second, that'd be a huge number. Uh, here, let's figure out how much current is going through this wire. So again, V equals IR. Well, I want to solve for current in this case. I want to know what I is. So I want to, I want to solve for I in my equation. So I want to get rid of R on this side. So if I divide both sides by R, I get V divided by R. And on this side, I just get I now because I got rid of the R. So there we go. So volts is 9 and resistance is 1,000. That's pretty simple. 9 divided by 1,000. Move the nine de decimal over three times. 0 0.009 amps, or otherwise known as 9 milliamps. So that's the amount of current that's going through. So see how simple that is? It's really not that bad. OK. Um, oh, and just for fun, I, I converted that into electrons per second. Just, just to kind of give you an idea. Look at this. Uh, millions billions, trillions, I don't even know what comes after a trillion, 56 something, 169 trillion electrons per second are moving through this wire. I think that just blows me away. Um, okay, so, you know, we don't, as uh, engineers, we don't draw circuits that look like this, <laughs> and we, you know, we want to draw them a little quicker, so uh, this is what the same exact thing looks like in schematic form. So the symbol for a battery looks like this, the plus side is the, the, the um, smaller line and then the negative sign is the longer line there and that's just what a battery looks like and then I just drew my nine volts here again and this is what a resistor looks like sometimes there's more zigzags and the resistor looks a little bit longer but that's basically it a thousand ohms so I'm just drawing the same thing and this is a little easier to see that we're talking a full circle and the other thing you notice is I have an arrow here <clears throat> this is showing the direction of current 
And in all schematics, uh, if someone just sat down one day and said, listen, here's what the standard's going to be. Uh, elect uh, uh, power, let's see, electricity, we'll say, flows from the positive side to the negative side. Now, this kind of made me angry when I first learned that because I think we all know that electricity is electrons. So really what's really going on here is electrons are going from this direction uh, through the resistor and back up to the top. That's actually what's really happening in real life. Um, so unfortunately, I, I, don't, I don't really know why. We don't talk about it that way. We talk about, you can kind of visualize uh, negative charges going this way. Negative electrons are negative. But you can kind of also think about it as positive charges going the other way around. The analogy does work and the equations do work out if either way you go. So for whatever reason, uh, plus to negative is how this stuff works. And that's how this arrow is drawn. Uh, I want to take a look at this resistor. I've gotten rid of that schematic zigzag symbol for a second and just replaced it with a long rectangle because I want to talk about something. The other thing is I've simplified. I've Instead of 9 volts up here, I, I make it 10, and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to divide things around a little bit, and I want some nice round numbers here. Uh, but I did keep it at 1,000 ohms. Well, the question is, uh, this 10 volts goes all the way to the end, and so the top of the resistor is 10 volts. The bottom of the, of the resistor is 0 volts. Now, here's the question. If you remember, the resistor is kind of made of a whole bunch of just stuff that's mixed. It's just a mixture of stuff that happens to have a 1,000 ohms worth of resistance from one side to the other. But do you really think, if you were to measure the voltage in here, you just poke in there with a with a meter, if you started here, you'd get 10 volts. If you If you measured what it was over here, do you really do you think it's going to be 10 10 10 10 10 and that like I don't know halfway it instantly changes to zero and then from from that point on it's zero uh, as you probably know it's not that way what actually ends up happening is it just this resistor just kind of fights it continuously as it comes through it so you you start with 10 and then I don't know, around here you get 9 8 7 6 five, you know, half the voltage halfway through, five, four, three, two, one. So it's a gradual fight where the resistor, I guess you can kind of think of it, finally loses and it gets to zero down here. So it would be five volts right there. So if I were to cut the resistor and just kind of, you know, I literally took this resistor, I just took an X-Acto knife and I cut it in half and just put a wire in between the two pieces, I can still get my five volts there. And this actually uh, 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 kind of proves a couple points. And obviously, if I cut this resistor in half, that means one piece is 500 ohms because they would the before, if I go backwards, it was a thousand. So now that I cut it in half into two equal pieces, I get 500 and 500. And so what we've learned is two different things. Number one is you can break the resistor into pieces, and they still have the same effect as the overall. Uh, original resistor, which was a, a thousand ohms. So the amount of current that was going through here, uh, we changed from nine to ten. But remember, it was like 0.02 milliamps. This that doesn't change because the the current still has to fight the same overall amount of resistance as it goes through here. Just because I broke it in half, and remember I connected it down here, that still doesn't really change the amount of resistance. It's just you know it's just pushing them away. From, uh, pieces away from each other. So as far as the current going through here, it's still exactly the same as it was before. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is we've made something called a voltage divider. We've taken the 10 volts and we've been able to create 5 volts over here. And if I had done a smaller piece up here and a larger piece down below, then maybe I'd have 8 volts or something. I could slide up and down. And so we'll talk about how that works uh, later, but I just wanted to mention that here you can see these two resistors are equivalent to what we had before at 1,000. Okay, so resistors can add together when you, when you connect them end-to-end, -end, and this is called series connected. And we'll talk more about that in the future, but this is the simple. All right, finally, a simple light circuit. <clears throat> Here's our battery again, no big deal. Now we're doing 5 volts because uh, 5 volts you're going to see a lot in microcontrollers. And so, and this is a light. This is a symbol for actually a diode. Um, a diode is something that only allows uh, current to go through it in one direction. And thankfully, I've got it connected correctly so that the plus side here, here's the positive current coming through here, goes through the arrow. If it came in the other way, it would hit this wall. That's kind of the way to think about it, and not be able, and be blocked by the by this diode. But because it's correct, it's connected correctly, it actually goes through. And this is a special kind of diode because it makes light. 
if you remember that green L uh, LED I showed a picture of, uh, that's also a LED. So all LEDs are diodes. In fact, that's what LED stands for, light emitting diodes. So just something to keep in mind, if you connect an LED backwards, you're not going to see it light up. It's just going to fight the, the current, fight the power. So uh, <laughs> I had to say that. Um, make sure you connect it correctly. And we'll talk about how that works. And But the question is, uh, the, remember, if it's just by itself, there's no resistor, then the current's just going to go, uh, a lot of current's going to go through here because there's really not going to be any resistance. The LED itself doesn't provide too much resistance, so uh, that would allow way too much current to go through here. And remember from that, sh that sheet that only 25 milliamps was allowed, or 0 0.025. So in this, this is a question, this is a design question, which is, if you're starting with 5 volts and you want only 0 .0, 0 0.025 amps to go through, how much resistance should we put here to make sure the current doesn't go over this amount? And what we do is we bring out Ohm's law again, V equals IR, and this time we're going to solve for R. So I'm going to divide both sides by I. So here uh, R is by itself now, and V divided by is over here. And we're good to go. We, we know V, that's 5. We know current is what we want it to be, which is 0 0.025. This is a, off that spec sheet, remember. Um, and if you do the math, that's 200 ohms. So I would put a 200 ohm resistor in here, and that would keep the current into a, uh, in a manageable level that wouldn't blow this uh, light up. This light would just be nice and bright and happy at, uh, with a 200 ohm resistor. If I put a higher resistance in here, that would fight the current even more, wouldn't it? And so instead of 0.025 amps, you probably have 0.01 or something smaller, which means you'd have a dimmer light. So that's a way to make a to control the brightness is to change this resistor. So this is a very simple light circuit, it's just a diode and a resistor working together. Uh, the resistor protecting the diode, and we're going to be doing a lot of that. Okay, finally, the last uh, we're going to wrap this up with the idea of a breadboard. We're going to be looking at this in our first class. I'm going to bring some of these to the uh, classroom. And they look like this. There's big ones, there are small ones, there are long ones, whatever. I have a few that, that look actually just like this. And a breadboard is just a neat way to connect resistors and lights and stuff together very quickly without having to solder them, which is kind of like melting metal to hold them together. Um, so on the on the left side is what it looks like on the right side is how the holes are connected and so do you see for example this top row is all connected they're all the same that's the same thing here all these holes uh, by the red line are all connected just like you see here and likewise the next row down is all connected to each other so the blue line row is all connected so if you plug in here and then you come out of here somewhere else you're connected those two wires are connected together because these are all and then these rows in between each one, two, three, every five uh, holes here is also connected. You see that? So if you plug into one hole here, then you can plug into another one to connect to it. Any one of these here. Now this, you're going to have to ignore this middle strip. This one doesn't have middle holes. In fact, I've never seen one that does. So this might be an error. Just kind of ignore this. Here's some more of these lines here, and here's some more. So this is symmetric. So same idea down here. In fact, there's a here's a little sketch of what it kind of looks like if you were to pull off the. the the piece of plastic on the top, you see these aluminum pieces with a little, uh, they're kind of sheet metal, they just sort of bend when you stick the wire in and hold on to it. But you, this is uh, pictorially how it works, uh, um, how they're connected. So you can, have, you can imagine a whole bunch of these stacked on each other, not touching each other because then that would cause them to, to uh, short against each other. But um, Okay, uh, I think I have another, yeah, alright, so here's a real picture of a very simple circuit on a breadboard. And you can see, so this is obviously a 9 volt battery adapter, and the red is the positive, and the black is the is the negative from the from the adapter, from the battery, excuse me. So let's let's figure this out. We have the red wire going here, which means this whole uh, this is 9 volt. This is a 9 volt wire, so all these holes are 9 volts. And you can see um, the person put a I guess a little jumper, if you will, a wire that plugs into the 9 volts and then goes into here, so now this entire row is also 9 volts, all right? Oops, um, <laughs> I've accidentally pressed a button. Uh, so then someone put a resistor at the 9 volts, and then over to here to a new fresh row, and then uh, one leg of the diode went into here, and this would be the positive leg, and then the negative leg 
is in a different row. You see how those, this is very really important, the two legs of the diode are not sharing the same row. That means that wouldn't work if they were both touching the same row. Um, finally, this uh, negative leg is connected to negative ground. So we have a circuit. We have, and I'll click the button now again correctly. Uh, you can see I kind of drew on top of it the, the schematic. Kind of see how that works. So that's your circuit, and that's how the breadboard works. And I guarantee you, you'll make the same mistake I did and put the diode in so they share the same row, both legs, and then we'll see what's wrong and we'll fix it. And then we'll experiment by doing different resistors and multiple uh, diodes and do some different circuits on Tuesday and just get comfortable with the idea of breadboards because uh, those are really helpful. I think that's the end of my uh, presentation. It is. Okay, so... Um, Take a look at this. Uh, you obviously, you know, please go through these slides again or this video again if any of it uh, didn't make sense. You can always email me at gizmosmith at gmail.com. Uh, my contact info is on the website. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys uh, tomorrow, or excuse me, Tuesday. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Thanks.